My name is Margaret Graham, and I graduated in 2012. I'm actually doing a number of things now. Uh, my main gig, though, is I work for an arts nonprofit based here in New York. It's called Voices in Contemporary Art, or VOCA, that focuses on generating interdisciplinary dialogues and collaborative programming between artists, arts professionals, and students, um, basically to generate education around the preservation of contemporary art. So that's one. Um, I also am an associate editor at the Brooklyn Rail and a contributing writer there as well. I am a freelance collections manager in my spare time um, and also doing other writing projects on the side whenever I can. I think one of the most interesting and exciting things about being part of this art criticism program was the networking aspect. It's all about the people you meet, not only through your classmates and teachers, but also the people you get to sit down with after the talks and meet through these incredible experiences. I do feel that after attending this program, I do have a better intellectual base, both in terms of my breadth of understanding of art criticism as a subject, uh, and also in terms of the ways in which you can communicate with other people, be it through writing or dialogue, um, or you know, sitting down over dinner, um, and the ways in which conversation and really thoughtful dialogue can arrive. Um, yeah, and shared experiences that can come through text and through looking at art and writing about art and the way in which you can share that with other people. So writing, workshopping together with a group, um, and also reading incredible um, just resources like pieces by Walter Benjamin or you know TJ Clark or Eileen Miles, people that I would not have necessarily come across in another program, but was very excited and proud to be able to um, enter into my personal archive here. Uh, before I entered the program, I was an undergraduate at Bucknell University in Pennsylvania, where I got a double major in art history and creative writing. Um, and once I graduated, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, but I knew that I loved writing and I loved art, and I especially loved writing about art. Um, and so while art history was a possible path for me to you know, go the PhD track or the more academic route, um, I was more interested in moving into a facet that was more conversation-based, that wasn't putting a period at the end of the sentence. It was looking at what is happening now and connecting what's happening, what has happened in art history in the past to what's happening today, um, and learning how to speak and write about that. And so when I found out about this program, it seemed like the next natural step for me to take. And um, they welcomed me with open arms, and I am so glad because it turned out to be one of the best choices I could have made. A recent project that I just completed was uh, a catalog essay, actually, for an upcoming Alex Katz retrospective that's going to be happening uh, this summer at the High Museum in Atlanta, which is really fantastic. Um, the curator there who was putting together the show approached me uh, this past summer. Uh, he had read some of my work that I'd done in the rail that I'd published with them. Um, and had heard about me through Vincent Katz, who I had a class with here, um, and reached out and asked if I was available to contribute. And it was a really challenging essay to write, actually, because up until that point, uh, Katz was an artist that I had not had strong opinions on, um, but this really gave me an opportunity to spend more time with his work and challenge myself to write about something that didn't come so easily. Um, so it was a 3,000-word essay, and it's coming out in a few months. Uh, it's a very sleek, very beautiful book, um, and should be on shelves in their store soon. Being a part of this program was especially pivotal for me as a writer because I entered with a background in art history and creative writing and already feeling as though I had a pretty strong grasp on my own personal voice. And entering this program, I found that I really had no idea. I had to start from square one, along with these 12 
other brilliant people in my class who all of us basically had to get stripped down as writers to bare bones and start again um, and really figure out why we were writing, what we really cared about and what we had to say. Um, and so I think being part of the art criticism program here really made me a much stronger writer in a lot of ways. Um, I remember, especially at one of the um, post-lecture dinners, Peter Sheldahl sat down with a group of us and um, we were all just chit-chatting. At one point he said, I'm going to give you a piece of advice as a young writer. And he said, imitate those writers that you like best. Read a lot, read widely, and read well, and then try and imitate those writers that you appreciate the most. And you're going to fail every single time. But in that failing, you're going to find your voice. And for me, that was a real turning point because I realized that I didn't have to have it all together. I didn't have to figure it out right away. And so by looking to critics that I really admired, like Robert Hughes and Fairfield Porter and Eileen Miles, and trying to sort of capture something of what they had done with their work, um, I was able to push through and figure out who I was as a writer and what I was trying to say, both about art and just about, about the world in general. I was trying to find work as a, an art writer in New York, especially as a young one who's still starting out, uh, is a challenge because it is hard to make a living that way. Um, but it's also hard to be a self-starter. I mean, you're in a city where there are a thousand things going on at once and you want to be a part of them all. Um, and you can't, but you also have to be confident enough to get yourself out there and pitch and connect with the people that you know and continue pushing yourself to write about the things that you like that you don't like um, and realizing that your voice has a place in the world of art writing. So you just have to build it for yourself though. It's not one that's going to be there for you without asking. Um, so it's definitely a challenge. <laughs> not easy, but worth it, I think. Seeing my first piece published in the Brooklyn Rail was so exciting. I like grabbed five copies and sent one home to my mom and you know it's it's the small things you realize like I can do this and it wasn't just having it published it was having uh, you know meeting somebody at a gallery opening two months later who heard my name and said oh I read that review that you wrote about that Fujimura show in Chelsea and it made me want to run and go see it and I thought hey like people are listening. It's not just about what you write. It's the fact that you're actually affecting people and making a difference to the art world and uh, to those people who are readers and who also care about what you care about. Well, I mean, I'm not so concerned with the market, but I do think that art history is a story and criticism is the dialogue that really keeps it propelling forward and alive. And while I'm sure the art scene and market would roll forward regardless of the quality writing, I think that is coming out of programs like this one, um, the quality writing and the really intense critical thought is what is making the story worth telling and something that people will want to read and pay attention to in generations to come. I am more interested in looking at art and from a subjective stance and saying, okay, yes, there's information in it, but there's something else happening as well, person to person and piece to piece. Um, and I think that's what criticism is really getting at. In essence, my thesis focused on three poet painters from the 20th and 21st centuries, uh, E. Cummings, Atel Adnan, and Elizabeth Bishop, um, all of whom who lived on different continents and corners of the globe and were writing and painting often at the same time, but whose work is not looked at together. Um, and actually, what I ended up doing was taking um, an Eastern um, art form called haiga, which uh, actually evolved at the same time as the haiku, as a, as a poetic form. And haiga was um, and is a calligraphic haiku 
written in very gestural prose where it's accompanied by a very simple gestural drawing. So illustration and word forms are combined together. Um, and there, while this is not a very structured form, it does have some basic tenets that I then applied to looking at the artwork of these other poet painters. Um, and it sort of opened up a really interesting new lens to discuss and think about them through. Um, it was a really fun and very challenging project. I have a background in poetry and art history, so that interest and passion is still there. Um, it hasn't gone anywhere. Um, but my undergraduate work, actually, uh, the thesis that I conducted when I was at um, Bucknell University was on E.E. E. Cummings specifically, looking at his paintings um, and poetry as well. But um, I am really fascinated with and kind of interested in digging into both personally and through my career into interdisciplinary work. So people who are multifaceted, instead of focusing on just one realm of who they are and what they produce, really looking at the ways in which not only a singular person can be a writer and a painter and a critic and a musician and all these many things at the same time, um, but also how people who are multifaceted and who do all these things can collaborate together um, and how knowledge comes through those discussions and that kind of interdisciplinary dialogue. So um, while I'm not actively writing or researching um, those specific projects, I do find that the artists that I write about and am interested in are often um, kind of fall in that category. The seed of my thesis came from an interest that I had already had and a project that I had been working on in my undergraduate years. Um, but I have to say the final product and the, the result critically was teased out by my thesis advisor, Trini Dalton, who was my mentor and cheerleader and editor and everything in between who was not only really there to push me and make me think deeper, ask more questions, write further into a subject than I thought I could, um, but was also just a really great support and really helped um, push me to write into places that uh, I didn't necessarily think I was willing or able to go on my subject matter. Um, and she's also a poet, also an artist, um, and a phenomenal one. And um, so I think while my thesis was, in the end, a great success, that was partially because I pushed myself to the limit, but also because I had a network of people like Trini, um, like the group thesis advisor, Lynn Tillman, and the rest of the students in my program pushing me to do the best I could. While I can't speak to the number of art critics as a whole in New York, uh, because there are so many yeah, of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I do know that in my program alone, in the year that I graduated, um, out of the 12 or 13 of us that were in the group, um, at least half were practicing artists and um, still are working today. Um, I, a number of them were painters, a number were sculptors, a number were photographers, and very talented. Um, and I think that that's really interesting to me that they are these kinds of people who find that they want to make, but they also want to discuss and think about and critically reimagine. Um, so they, they make art, but they like to pick it apart other people making it too.